Nothing in living memory has done more to divide this country and define our politics than Brexit. I didn't support it, but frankly, I do understand why 17 and a half million people did. It wasn't, as the critics said, about bigotry, racism or hate in the most part. It was about rolling the dice and striving for something better, as they saw it, for our freedom and independence. Project Fear warned the British people that their lives and their country would collapse if they dared to gamble on the unknown. And as with Donald Trump in the US, many people answered back by saying the status quo wasn't good enough anyway. The people promising the apocalypse were the same people who promised to make our lives infinitely better for years and failed. But exactly three years on, it's time for some cold, hard truths. The promises made pro-Brexit have also been broken. This whole debate is about democracy. Is it not time we took back control of our immigration policy? Take back control of the £350 million pounds that we send to the European Union every week. The free trade agreement should be one of the easiest in human history. The UK has voted to leave the European Union. <laughs> Let June the 23rd go down in our history as our Independence Day. Brexit means Brexit, and we are going to make a success of it. We've got an oven-ready deal, put it in the microwave. Anybody turn that microwave on? <laughs> Today, the IMF said that the UK economy will shrink this year. It will be worse off than any other significant economy, including Russia. Think about that. A nation pounded by sanctions, locked out of the global banking system, cast aside as the world's pariah, will grow faster than we will in the UK. Britain's the only G7 economy that will actually shrink this year. That's the forecast. The US, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan... They all had COVID lockdowns. They're all battling the same cost-living crisis caused by Putin's war. So why are we worse off? Well, Bloomberg said today that Brexit's cost of the UK economy £100 billion a year. The economy is 4% smaller than it would have been, but it never happened, they say. So where are the benefits? That's my big question. Vote Leave promised £350 million a week for the NHS. Well, the NHS is on its knees. Brexiteers said we'd take back control of our borders. Well, that's not happening. Immigration's rising. The borders are in chaos. Many industries are short of workers. Ask anyone in hospitality. They said we'd strike lucrative trade deals across the world, not least with the US. Well, we haven't, have we? Disarray over Northern Ireland, anger in Scotland, attesting the very existence of the United Kingdom. Britain, frankly, feels like a bit of a basket case, lurching from shambles to chaos. Maybe that's why a staggering new poll published by Unheard shows that 647... <laughs> of the 650 UK constituencies now I think Brexit was a mistake. Having voted for Remain, I backed Brexit in the end because I believe in democracy and the will of the people. I didn't back the principle of it. I just backed the principle of you give the people of the country what they voted for, and the majority voted to leave the European Union. But the will of the people may now be changing.